Now let's try a series that's both a geometric series and an alternating series. So I'm going to go with sum from 1 to infinity, minus 1 half to the n plus 1. So if you notice, what I can do is, well, I can bring the minus 1 to the n plus 1 out, which emphasizes the qualities of an alternating series, or I can write it out this way, which makes it look more like a geometric series. Okay, now note, for the geometric series, we're going to have a equal to 1 quarter, r equal to minus 1 half. So I can get the sum. The sum is going to be equal to 1 fourth, 1 over, 1 minus, minus 1 half, which gives me 1 sixth, which is equal to 0.166, and that repeats forever. Okay, also note, we know this converges because r is equal to minus 1 half, absolute value of minus 1 half is 1 half, which is strictly less than 1. So geometric series test says conversion. But that's not what we're worried about. We want to consider this thing as an alternating series. So this will just confirm things that we'll see in a little bit. Now, as an alternating series, this thing's going to have as its a sub n 1 half to the n plus 1. Okay, so the question we can ask is, let's say, for instance, estimate the sum within epsilon equal to 0 0.01 first thing we'll need to do is to show that it's conversion. So I'll need to do two things. Well, three things actually. The first one is to note that a sub n is always a positive number. That's the first thing you need to check for your alternating series test. So that's taken care of. These things can never become negative. Next, we need to show that the limit of a sub n as n goes to infinity is equal to zero. So I can draw the graph of the function that I fit to this. 1 half to the x plus 1, which is the same as 2 to the minus x minus 1. You could plot points at minus 1, 0, and 1, and then connect the dots, and then you get the graph looking like this. So I definitely have that the limit as this goes out to infinity is equal to 0, just by looking at the graph. And I also have that it's going to be decreasing because the function's decreasing. So I get my conditions 1 and 2. And that's all I need to have a convergent alternating series. So this series definitely converges by alternation. We already saw that it converged by the geometric series test, though. Anyway, two ways to see conversion. Now I want to estimate the sum. We already know the sum, but let's see how our estimate works using the alternating series test and the way we get the estimate off of that. All right, I have. My rule says you have your epsilon, you're going to solve the figure out an a sub n plus 1 that gets you within the 0.01. We want that less than 0.01. So this is equal to 1 half n plus 2 power. So I'm just going to push things to the other side of the inequality, and that'll give me 100 is less than 2 to the n plus 2. Now how do I get the n plus 2 out of that? Well, that's what we use logarithms for. So if I take the natural log of both sides, I'm going to wind up with natural log of 100 less than or equal to natural log of 2 times n plus 2. Now you might be worried, well, why does the inequality stay where it is? How do I know it doesn't flip? That's the whole point of increasing and decreasing. If I'm increasing, which natural log definitely is, because if you look at the graph, it goes up like this. Increasing means if I apply my function to a less than b, then f of a will stay less than f of b. If I'm decreasing and I have a less than b, then it's going to switch it. f of a will then be bigger than f of b. So increasing natural log of x just says, if I apply natural log to both sides, I don't break the inequality. Now I can just play with this to figure out a good number. So I'm going to divide by natural log of 2 and then push the 2 to the other side, and that's going to leave me with, I need an n bigger than natural log of 100 over natural log of 2 minus 2. Collapse this, this is saying n bigger than 4.64. So we go with n equal to 5. Take the partial sum for the first five elements of this, and I get 1.71875. How do I interpret this? This says the sum is going to be within my 1.1875 if I add or subtract my epsilon, which is 
Now, I actually know the sum, so we could check that this worked out. On this side, I have 1.61875. On this side, I have 1.81875. Our sum, which is supposed to be in the middle, is 1.66. Keep repeating. So that definitely falls within my range. So the end that we found definitely works. All right, let's just look at another straight up application of the alternating series test. Let's go with n from one to infinity, minus one to the n plus one, natural log of n over n. Okay, I write out the first few terms. It's zero minus natural log of two over two, plus natural log of three over three, minus, and then so on. Okay, remember natural log of one is zero, so that's why we get a zero up in the first slot. We have to check two things, really three things. The first thing that I need is that our a sub n's are greater than zero. Okay, now that won't be a problem because I know, so we know what the graph of natural log looks like. When I get past one, okay, x bigger than one, natural log of x is gonna be positive. I'm sure I have a natural log written down here somewhere. Right there, one is where the zero is and then natural log is always above the y-axis. So it's always gonna be positive. So if a positive over a positive, that means my a sub n is always positive. To get the other two, I'm gonna to wanna to do the graph of natural log of x over x. To get that, we're gonna take the first derivative. Okay, that's gonna be a quotient rule, and that's gonna give me one minus natural log of x over x squared. Okay, the only thing you need to remember there, derivative of natural log of x is one over x. So, when will this be equal to zero? It'll be equal to zero when the top is equal to zero or when one minus natural log of x is equal to zero or natural log of x is equal to one. Okay, the only way this can happen is if x is equal to e. Okay, one way to think of that is if I take e, raise it to the natural log of x, then that has to be equal to e raised to the first power. e to the natural log of x collapses to x and then on this side I have e to the first power which is just e. Okay, that's just another way to think about it. So at x equal to e, I have f of e equal to one over e. That's what I get when I put e into the original function. Natural log of e is equal to one. So I plot that point and that's gonna be, so e is roughly 2.7. My point goes somewhere up there. Another good reference point to note is gonna be f of one. Natural log of one is equal to zero. So I also have a point here. Okay, we check a point on each side of e. To figure out increasing and decreasing f prime of one, that's gonna be equal to one minus natural log of one over one squared. So that's just gonna be one over one squared, which gives me a one. So over here, we're increasing. If I take a point past E, E is 2.7, so why don't we go with three? That's gonna give me one minus natural log of three over nine, and that's gonna be roughly minus 0.01. Okay, you're gonna to need to go to a calculator for this guy. All right. So that's gonna say I'm decreasing here. And so we already see we're going up and then back down. All right, we already know that the natural log of x over x once I get past one is always positive. So this thing is decreasing. It's gonna go asymptotically to some lower limit. So let's figure out what that limit is. If I take the limit of natural log of x over x, we put in for infinity. That gives me infinity over infinity. So I can use L'Hopital's rule. Derivative of the top is one over x, derivative of the bottom is x. So we're really taking the limit of, limit of x going to infinity of one over x over one. That limit's just gonna go to zero. Since that limit makes sense, L'Hopital's rule says that's equal to my original limit. So now I know as I go out this way, we're gonna have to go down to zero. So if I connect the dots, my graph looks like this. Now, what did I just get from there? I got limit of a sub n is gonna be equal to zero because it's fitted to this graph, which is gonna go out to zero. And we also see once I get past, say three, my graph is gonna be decreasing all the way out. So that's gonna mean that my sequence is also decreasing once I get past three. So I have the two conditions that I need for the alternating series test. So that means this alternating series is going to converge.